Story one. When I was in HS, my girlfriend's parents would let me stay overnight on the weekend so long as I slept in their RV that was parked in back of the house. I had done it multiple times. My girlfriend would come sit outside with me for a while until she got tired, and then she would go inside to fall asleep, and I would listen to my Walkman while I tried to fall asleep. I remember one night I was having trouble falling asleep, which wasn't so unusual for me. But as I lay there, I started to notice an unfamiliar background sound noise. And when I removed my headphone, I realized that it sounded like people outside the RV were having a loud discussion. But the number of voices started to multiply and multiply and get louder and louder until it was unbearable. I searched round and round, peering out the windows, but nobody was there. I was very shaken at this point, and I decided to run into the house and sleep in the living room and try to explain myself in the morning. Problem was, every time I got about six more away from the RV, there would be a flash of white, and I would open my eyes and find myself back in the RV. Now I was nearly having a panic attack, so I called my girlfriend on the phone and she could hear how terrified I was, so she told me she was coming outside to get me. I heard the back sliding door of her house open, I heard her walk across the deck, down the steps, across the garden stones, and finally her hand fumble on the RV door. But when it swung open and no one was there, now I was pretty much in tears when suddenly felt the presence of something behind me. I turned around and found this massive red aura hovering there, and I was overcome with this immense sense of death and dread, and I felt like I couldn't breath, like I was being strangled. I remember feeling like this aura energy was killing me, like absorbing my life force, if that makes any sense. I dropped to my knees and realized that if I didn't break free real fast, I was most certainly going to die. I don't know where I found the strength from, but I willed myself back to my feet and slammed the RV door open and bolted for the house. This time, I actually got inside. I hollered for my girlfriend, and she came downstairs with her mom to much confusion. I explained everything that had happened, getting especially angry that my girlfriend never came outside like she promised. She said that we never spoke on the phone, and she had no idea what I was talking about. But when we compared our phones, mine showed a 125 conversation completed to phone while hers showed nothing. That's when her and her mom started taking me seriously and began to look quite scared themselves. The rest of the night was uneventful. Her mom let me try to sleep on the couch, but try as I might, I couldn't. Every time I closed my eyes, I would see a small circle of intensely burning white light. Story two, this is going to be a bit out there for most people but what I'm about to type out is true and actually happened to me. If you choose not to believe me, that's fine. I wouldn't expect you to, just don't be a dick about it. This all happened around late May to early June in 2017. I live out in Kentucky and have been here my whole life. I saved up some money and bought my first AR style rifle, Ruger AR 556 for anyone who cares. I had wanted one for a while, but never had the money to get one. So as soon as I got a chance, I grabbed it. I needed to sight in my gun after I bought. My family owns 20 plus aces of land, so I don't go to gun ranges around here because, first of all, people are dumb and our local one has bullet holes in the ceiling. And second, I prefer shooting on our own land. I had managed to get a Magpul D60 drum magazine at Gander Mountain because they were having a going out of business sale, so I guess really I was going to sight in the gun and test out the magazine's reliability. I barely had the magazine out of the box and had not gotten a chance to shoot it yet, but I looked up a bunch of reviews and could never find one that had the problems mine did that day. This is where things start getting a bit odd. My family has owned this land I shoot on for decades. Nothing weird has ever happened out here, that I know of, and I have taken people to the spot this happened at and nothing has recreated the feelings I had that day. I grabbed my gun, the drum, and 20 rounds of ammo and went outside to cross over to our field. To get to the field, I have to go through a barbed wire fence and about 300 foot of wooded area. The moment I crossed over the barbed wire, something felt off. I have been over there a thousand times before and like I said, nothing weird had ever happened down there and I have never had any weird experiences there. Something just felt off that day, like something wanted me to leave. I kept going though because nothing had ever happened out here before. I just thought maybe I was being paranoid or the wind and air pressure were just right to give an eerie feeling. So I walk on deeper into the woods. The further I get, the stronger the feeling is. I feel like I'm being watched, like something nearby is just staring into my soul. 
I keep going. I get halfway and this feeling is borderline unbearable. I stop dead in my tracks and think to myself something is off. Like I've said a thousand times, nothing like this has ever happened before. I know something is going on now. When I grabbed my ammo when I left home, I did not load it into the magazine because I wanted to hurry and get to the field so I could get everything set up. This is where I listened to that gut feeling. I stopped dead in my tracks and loaded the magazine with the 20 rounds I brought. Something told me that something wasn't right and I needed to be ready just in case. Something is watching me and I don't know what it is or where it is. As I am loading my magazine, out of nowhere I smell something dead. It just came out of nowhere. I had been standing there for two minutes with no scent. Then all of a sudden it smells like a month old rotting carcass is beside me. I look around and directly behind me is a mangled animal that aside from the smell looks nearly fresh. It was so mangled, the only thing that gave me a clue as to what the animal is was the color of what was led of its fur, which was a white gray color. It was a rabbit or possum. The smell did not go along with the age of this. Whatever I caught the stench of, that wasn't it. I finished loading the magazine, immediately stuck it in my gun, and held the bolt open that way if I tripped, my gun wouldn't fire accidentally. For some reason, I kept fucking going. I'm nearly out of the woods. I can see the field I'm going to dead ahead. That's when it happened. This entire time, I've been walking alongside a creek. The creek turns to the left as you approach the field I was going to. As I got to the turn in the creek, I heard a large splash in the water. I turned quickly and what I seen I'll never forget. This thing was easily eight, nine feet tall and stood on two legs. Aside from the water splash, it was dead silent. It had very long arms and long legs. It was a light brown color, almost the color of a deer. Asterisk updating this to say I got thinking about it the other day. I think it was much lighter brown than a deer. It still had a brownish look too, it, but not that dark. Maybe it actually was gray, and the lighting made it look a light shade of brown. But it looked like skin, not fur. Perhaps the freakiest thing about it was its size. It looked severely malnourished. Very skinny and tight skin across its body. Imagine taking a fully grown man that only weighs 120 pounds and stretching him out to be 9 feet tall. But he stays the same width and doesn't get skinnier as you stretch him out. It had somewhat of an odd walk too but this could have been caused by the mud near the creek bed. It never faced me, so I did not get a chance to see its front. It just kept walking and never turned around. This scared the absolute shit out of me. I was 99% sure I knew what this thing was. I tried to close the bolt on my gun to chamber around just in case this thing turned around to fight. I had no intention of shooting this thing unless it gave a sign it was going to attack. If it was what I hunk it was, the gun wouldn't have done anything but piss it off anyway. When I tried to chamber around, the magazine would not let go of the round. The force of the bolt closing would break your finger if you were to close it on your finger. I had been loading and unloading the magazine the day before to help loosen the spring to make it easier to load in the future. I could take the rounds out with my hand, but when I come across this fucking thing, somehow it decides it wants to keep the fucking bullet. By now the thing is gone and I'm basically sitting there with my dick in my hand. That magazine never worked right again. I kept it a few more days but had to send it back because it was tearing up my ammo. It would hold on to bullets so tight, the bolt tried to close and just scratched the gouge so deep in the casing, powder was almost leaking out. After it walked off, I realized if I had shot, I would have deafened myself. It caught me so off guard I almost fired a 5.56 round in a heavily wooded area without ear protection. I had brought some with me but didn't have it on. Story 3 once I hiked through the forest to some old castle on a hill. To get there, I needed to cross a bridge that goes over a 20 meter deep canyon. I've been there a thousand times as I used to live in the area. This particular time, I started to get a weird feeling as soon as I stepped into the forest. It got stronger and stronger until it was pure fear. I thought I must have eaten something wrong or so because there was no reason whatsoever to be afraid. So I tried to ignore it and went on. Right before I stepped onto the bridge, that weird feeling acted up so wildly I almost turned back. Again, I convinced myself that I was being stupid and made it to the middle of the bridge. One has quite a nice view from that position into forest and the rock formations below. So as always, I stopped and looked down to the right side of the bridge. 
Then I turned to the left. But before I could look down, that feeling didn't let me. At that point, I really thought that I must go crazy. But still, I obeyed, didn't look down, and made my way to the castle ruin complex that started right behind the bridge. Been there for 15 minutes when some police officers arrived, started to scream at me to come down as I was climbing the old walls, interrogated me who I was, what I did there, who I saw on my way to the castle, how long I have been there, and how come I didn't see the dead guy under the bridge on the left side. So apparently he jumped shortly before I arrived, and I guess they thought I was involved or a suicide buddy of him and was about to jump from the ruin walls. Turns out I can sense dead people, or whatever. I had a couple experiences with that warning system. Weird. Story four, I work at several attractions for the Big Mouse that has tourist destinations in Orlando and Anaheim. When I first started working for the Mouse, I learned that most of the buildings were haunted in one form or another. Generally, I take this stuff with a grain of salt. Show me the science or prove it to me, then I'll believe. I've had two separate encounters with two ghosts in two different attractions, and let me tell you, I believe a hell of a lot more now. Experience one, in a slow moving journey through time, you come across a scene where a famous painter is lying on his back, painting the ceiling of a building. There is a ladder going up to that scene, and the rumor was that a maintenance guy had a heart attack during his shift one night and dropped at the base of the ladder. No one found him until the next morning, and he was already dead. It became a tradition upon closing the ride for the night to tell him good night, or else havoc would come down upon the ride the next day. Silly, I know, but we all played along. I never really believed in it. Everything seemed very circumstantial. On one particularly slow day, I was riding through the attraction when all of a sudden it stopped in that scene I mentioned earlier. Now, if you've ridden this ride, you'll know that it's basically a train car with two rows. Well, as far as I could see ahead of me, there was no one. As far as I could see behind me, there was no one. The ride system is pretty sophisticated. When someone hops out, there are pressure-sensitive mats on one side that trigger the ride to stop and show on our ride display screen exactly where it is. On the other side of the ride vehicle, there are photoelectric beams that also give the exact location of this intrusion, as we call them. Now, we stop this ride pretty often. Someone takes too long to get into the ride vehicle, stop it, and then start it back up again. Well, in this case, they started speaking over the intercom into the entire ride. That usually means someone is out of a vehicle somewhere on the ride. A few minutes into sitting there, I start to hear keys jingling, two sets headed in my direction. I'm completely alone, and here come my fellow mouse employees looking rather concerned. Iridescent song, did you jump out? Of course I hadn't, to which I told them. They look at each other and back at me, both looking from the opposite directions they've come from. Did you see anyone? I hadn't. It was just me. The mat and the eye beam were both triggered in this scene. We all sort of stare at each other and sort of whisper the ghost's name at each other. They leave, and within five minutes, we are moving again. But I never rode alone again. Experience two. Another attraction I work at is a motion simulator that spins and creates G-forces to simulate space flight. When the attraction first opened, there was only one option. The story goes that a mother brought her child in to experience the attraction, and when the attraction had finished, the child was unresponsive. Emergency services were called, and it was later discovered during the child's autopsy that he had an undiagnosed heart condition. This much is true, there is a fellow mouse employee that was working on that day and remembers the story. Multiple other mouse employees have looked up the story, myself included. Since then, it's been said that the ghost of that little boy likes to hang around in the ride room where he died. There are multiple reports of hearing him laughing during opening procedures, of him calling out for his mom, of the sensors going off before the ride starts and upon checking the cameras, there being stuff in front of it that definitely wasn't there before since we check all of the cameras before the ride starts. Again, I'm usually very skeptical about this sort of thing. One morning, I'm scheduled an opening shift, which doesn't normally happen due to my low seniority. I show up and go to open ride room number three, which is the room where this little boy met his tragic end. During opening checks, there is one person in each of the four rooms, all completing the same tasks. Ride rooms one and two are connected by a small closet and ride rooms three and four are similarly connected by a small closet. 
We usually don't chat in the mornings with the person opening the other ride room since we are all trying to get through our checklist as quickly as possible. I get to the part where I'm about to run the ride and check for errors at the end of my checklist and go in to start closing up my vehicles. It gets pretty loud in there, to the point where if we need to get someone's attention, we have to raise our voices. I start to check my ride vehicles and close the first two of ten. That's when I start gearing laughing. A little boy. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's one of the other openers playing a joke on me, so I move on. Go to check the next two. They're good, so I close them. I hear the laughter again, closer and louder this time. I turn around to check over my shoulder, and there's a faint flicker of movement from the corner of my eye. So I go to check and see what it is. There's nothing. At this point, I'm spooked. I hurry and check the rest of my ride vehicles, close them up, and do a final check of my ride room before closing everything up and setting the ride to start. I hear the giggling again, turn around like last time, and there's a faint shimmer disappearing down the hallway. Of cows, I chase it to see what was there. Turns out to be nothing. Again, so I go to the other ride room to see who was opening over there. A girl that I've worked with before quite a bit. She normally opens and tells me she's had similar experiences where it looks like someone is watching you or just out of the corner of your eye and there's no one there and that the laughing sometimes gets to be just downright creepy. Multiple people have encountered this little boy ghost at various times during the day, mostly under the conclusion that he's lonely. Story five, I bought my house in 2008. It's an old Sears and Roebuck's kit house built in 1923. When I purchased it from the realtor, she said that an old retired city utilities worker had been the only owner of it before I bought it and said that he had maintained it fairly well. She wasn't wrong either. The only thing it needed was a new roof. I kind of wondered why it had sat vacant for a few years. I found out why a few months after buying it. While moving my stuff into the place, I was storing everything I wouldn't need immediately in the basement. It was a finished basement, so it wasn't too awful. But I kept hearing noises while I was down there sorting my stuff into things I'll need soon and it can wait piles. It sounded as if someone was pacing from my kitchen to the front door and back. Then a few weeks later, I was down there grabbing some things. I heard a piano above me. Not a grand piano, but a piano you might see in church. Not an organ, but a smallish piano. I could even tell you what song it was, How Great Thou Art. I did some research on the place. Turns out the retired city utilities worker had died in the bathtub. It wasn't anything horrific. I talked to his daughter. She just happened to work as a pharmacy technician at the CVS near my house. She told me that he had a massive heart attack while he was in the tub. She came over for dinner and found him there later that night. I expressed my sincere sympathy for having to deal with such a traumatic experience. The very next Saturday, I was out doing some yard work and this little old dude came up to me. I shut down the weed eater and had a chat with him. He said he used to live here and that he wanted to look at the place one last time before he moved away. He was pretty feeble looking, so I wasn't too intimidated. I invited him inside for a glass of iced tea and to check out what I had done to it since he was last in there. He politely declined, said the outside looked beautiful, and he was certain that the inside looked just as good. He expressed his gratitude that someone responsible had purchased the place. He walked away. I started to pull the ripcord on the weed eater and then thought of something else I wanted to say to the man. To my surprise, he was already gone. Weird. I didn't see any cars drive by, and I was positive he couldn't have walked down the block and around the corner in the span of eight seconds. It just wasn't possible. The noises I heard in the house went away after that. I think that little old dude I talked to was the ghost in my home, and he wanted to be sure I was going to take care of the house he bought and built. I still own and live there, and I hope I'm taking care of it as good as he would like. Thanks for watching. Don't leave before leaving a like to this video, also hit the subscribe button to support my work. And as always, have a horrific nightmare my dear.